Hi, you guys. Oh, man, I'm feeling like I don't, like, look my best today, but um, everyone's at school today and functional, and so hopefully that makes um, a difference. Gosh, what a mess. I feel like I look like such a mess. So thank you for patiently working with me this week because um, I definitely haven't been in here like I would prefer to be, and I know that's not great for you guys either because if you don't see me here, a lot of times you don't show up here either. So let's commit to getting back in and being on track. Um, as you kind of log on to this, I want to, I want to hear from you, like what is going well this week? What are you doing great at? Um, you know, or what are you celebrating? Because I hope that you are coming back from a holiday week and kind of, you know, if you enjoyed yourself over Thanksgiving, like I said, that's great. If you enjoyed yourself over Thanksgiving and found yourself enjoying yourself three or four days after, and that wasn't really what you envisioned that plan to be, I want you to learn from that, right? So that you can get stronger from that, you know, so that you kind of learn um, those tools and things that um, help you to, to make different choices if you weren't satisfied with your choices the next time, right? That's what this is all about, you guys, and that's kind of what we're, what we're going to talk a little bit about today in this Lunch and Learn, and I hope that it makes um, just, you know, it just sets off some fire because I know for me, um, thinking about things in terms of, of in, in thinking about my fitness and my health in terms of what we're going to talk about helps me to feel in control, right? And I, and I know I go back to that a lot, um, you know, doing the things and having the mindset that puts you back in control, but it's just because of that, right? That growth mindset is everything. Being that student and continuing to learn um, is everything as we go through this, right? Because even though we know the fundamentals of what we're supposed to do, um, learning how to do it and how to, how to adapt it into your life that works for you, as well as overcoming a lot of those limitations that we put on ourselves, um, the mindset piece of that, that can be tough. It can take some time, right? But it doesn't mean that you can't ever start. It doesn't mean that you ever have to be perfect. Um, and you can grow all along the way, all right? So um, I hope that, the, that this kind of caught your attention, right? That we're going to be talking about overcoming the biggest loser syndrome um, because it's fun, um, and uh, that's what we're doing. So when you think of biggest loser, like what do, what, does, what do you feel, like what does that say to you? Like what pops into your mind? For me, biggest, you know, biggest loser means extreme dieting, tons of exercise, you know, um, having to be very restrictive and, you know, eating um, boring, what I call boring um, diet food, right? Like the chicken and broccoli, the salads all, the, all day long and, you know, not having anything to make it fun or accessorize it or, or make it taste good and flavorful, right? Like that's what I think of when I think of Biggest Loser and as I watched that show growing up, which I probably so many of us did, um, you know, it kind of gave us the wrong perception about how to really lose weight. So I wanted to kind of tell you what happened to, you know, do you ever think about like what happened to those people on The Biggest Loser? Like, were, did they maintain their weight? Like, do you feel like they probably did? Um, you know, are they living healthy, happy lives today? So um, I read some statistics that were very interesting. So and there was a scientist, his name was Kevin Hall, and in May of 2016, he decided to follow up with the winners of people who had been on the show, The Biggest Loser. So six years after they finished the show, he has been tracking their weight, their um, metabolic rates. He was curious to see how well they had kept that weight off. And here is kind of what the results are, are you ready? So at the end of a typical season show, after 30 weeks of eating, these contestants ate usually between 1,200 to 1,500 calories a day, and they worked out all day long, right? Trainers screaming at them to do better. So there was 14 contestants, and all of them lost weight on the show, right? That that would happen when they did that to their body, right? So inspiring, maybe not. So here's, cause here's what happened. So over the next six year, 13 of the 14 contestants gained back significant amount of the weights that they had, the weight that they had lost. Four of the contestants 
ended up being heavier than they were be when they joined the show and they went on the show. And the worst part is all the contestants had permanently um, like messed up their metabolism. So when it comes to losing weight now in the future um, or present, they it, it, it's a lot harder for them to be able to lose that weight, right? So it's heartbreaking, right? You watch these people, like they went through so much work, put so much sweat and toil in, into losing this weight, all to really just gain it back, not have the right mindset um, of how to do it, and then actually physically kind of ruining their bodies um, from being able to do to do that too. So when I kind of look at that and I think, so what, right? So we're always asking that, so what? Um, I think it just makes it clear, like we have to look at our health and weight loss differently, right? It can't just be about restricting our calories, um, working out crazy amounts in hours and hours in the gym every day. Um, it can't be about, you know, having points, being able to use those to eat the wrong foods or saving them up to eat the wrong foods. It can't be about um, microwave dinners or box dinners or processed food that claims to help us to burn fat and to lose weight more quickly. Um, it just doesn't work, you guys, right? So, but what we've been practicing and the one fundamental that can work and does help us, and as humans, like we crave and we're designed to learn this way, um, is to build skills, right? As we acquire skills, we're able to get better. So there's one thing that's gonna help you to make sure that you lose weight the best and that you maintain your health and that you don't gain it back and that you keep a good metabolism and that's called practice. We have to practice, right? Our brains are naturally suited to learn through the process of creating new skills, right? So when we think of healthy eating as a skill, as you practice it, as you develop it over time, as opposed to a goal that you accomplish or you don't accomplish and then you forget about it, right? Which is kind of what dieting does. You've, you've got a defined start date, you've got a defined end date. I'm gonna lose 20 pounds within this time and then I'm gonna be done, right? How many times has that mindset failed you? Because you guys, I lost a lot of weight when I first started with Beachbody and I did the 21 day fix and it felt really good. And I even maintained that off for a couple of years. And then I started to do this, see this yo-yo pattern happen, right? Where I go up 10 pounds, down 10 pounds, up 10 pounds, down 10 pounds, right? And it was always because I never was looking at this as a process of creating a new skill, right? It was always just about getting the goal of getting 10 pounds off and finishing that and then what? And then what? Right? So I want you to like write that down. Healthy eating is a skill that you develop and practice over time. Healthy eating is a skill that you practice and develop over time. Like write that down and like I want you to really embrace that, right? And even put that those I statements in there. I eat healthy. It's a skill that I practice every day and I'll develop and get stronger at over time, right? Write, write those I am statements and, and put that even into your affirmations um, of how you do that, right? So let's look at it a little bit different way. So let's, um, let's say that you're learning to play the piano, right? So and if you want to become um, a musician and um, you've got to have that discipline to practice, right? So you show up every day and you move your fingers up and down the keys, you take instruction, you get a, you get a coach, right? Or what do they call that, a piano teacher? <laughs> you um, develop basically this new language to translate sheet music into music that you hear and that you can feel proud of and that you love to share, right? All of these things. That's exactly what we're doing when you um, turn 
healthy eating into a skill instead of looking at just as a goal, right? Because over time, as you keep practicing this, your relationship with food will start to transform, right? So the habits that you get and the, and the food choices that you are kind of resistant or have to think about making a lot right now, um, it becomes more automatic, right? And as that happens, really we don't have to worry about losing weight anymore. If our body's not at the right weight, it will occur naturally without us even really thinking about it, right? So um, I want to give you just a couple of things that you can apply um, to your diet right now if you're kind of seeing yourself plateaued or, or not losing weight, right? That you can start to practice more um, to really put into play so that you are acquiring these skills of healthier eating, okay? So let's kind of just go through this. It's kind of just like a skills inventory so to speak. So maybe you could just grab a piece of paper and write how you're doing, right, in these areas. Um, and just even if you see like one of these areas as, as a good place to start with some improvements, like you'll make a big difference in it, okay? So number one, um, let's talk about kind of your, your habits and, and your mindset, kind of give it a little tune up, right? So ask yourself some of these questions. Number one, are you eating three full meals per day, right? Are your meals full? Are you feeling satisfied as you're eating those meals, right? How are you feeling? Um, and then are you snacking? How much are you snacking? Do you have one snack a day, two snacks a day, three snacks a day? Um, how are you doing it at including proteins and good healthy fats in your meals? Is it something that you always hit, kind of hit? Um, how about fruits, potatoes? Do you find yourself eating a lot of those, of those starchy vegetables um, that we would consider carbohydrates of fruit? You know, are you pretty moderate? You have one serving a day, no servings a day, seven servings a day. How are you doing with that? Do you eat in the morning? Do you have a good breakfast? Do you start your day with, with fueling yourself and breaking your fast? Are you preparing your meals at home? Do you eat a lot of meals from home or are you eating out a lot, right? That can make a difference, really. Not even just that, you know, if you, even if you're making healthier choices, some of the ways that they prepare it at restaurants have a lot of hidden sodium and other things that we don't know or think about. Um, are you having too many cheats, right? How many, how many times are you um, having silly, silly treats or um, other things? Is it too frequently? Do you drink um, alcohol multiple times a week? Do you have anyone keeping you accountable? Are you in here helping yourself to be accountable, right? So I want you to think about those things and if they're in, it was like my post that I talked about discipline this morning, right? And just kind of like re-engaging that. If you're only half in, then you're only gonna get half the results. Right? So I'm going to follow up this Lunch and Learn with an email to everybody, and I'm going to repost those commitments, right? Those commitments that we um, all committed to do as we start. Okay? So habits. We've got, to, we've got those habits, and we have to make sure that we, um, we're putting those into practice. Okay? Number two, watch your carbs, right? Carbs are really key to our diet. Um, especially I think when we want to lose weight, it's very good to have the right types of carbs, but we want to make sure that they're the right types of carbs, right? So make sure that you're making the better choices with your carbohydrates most of the time, right? Now I didn't say all of the time. I didn't say never have, never indulge or have a treat, right? Especially this group is all about moderation through the holidays and making sure that we're mindfully including those things, but um, there are some things that you might want to trade off or, or make sure that we're doing enough, right? So if you're eating a lot of carbohydrates that are like white flour um, or white pot or pastas or things like that that are, don't, aren't inclusive of like whole grains or a lot of fiber, um, I want you to, sorry, make sure that you um, are adding um, some of the best ones, right? So if you're following Ultimate Portion Fix, 
are you eating from the top of the list, right? Meaning, you know, those top, in those lists, they're built, the most nutrition dense food is at the top of each of your colored container lists, right? So are you eating from the top of the list or are you eating more from the bottom of the list, right? If you're following the to be mindset, grab out your quick reference sheet and take a look at all of those fiber filled carbohydrates. Are you eating more of those or are you eating kind of from the silly carbs list? Um, which are things that are nice to have once in a while but aren't really the best for us. So make sure that you are doing a good job at that. Um, and then also balancing that with good protein. You guys, protein, its purpose is to help us to, to be full and satisfied. So don't neglect that. Make sure that we um, have a lot of that, okay? So um, number three that will help you is to cut back on the snacks. So you guys, this is where it becomes really important to make sure that you're tracking. So if you're tracking and you're eating three good full meals a day, right? And, and let's say you're adding in two snacks a day and you're not losing weight, then it's time to maybe cut back on those snacks, right? So I wouldn't say cut back both of your snacks, but maybe you only need one snack instead of two snacks. So what I would recommend is, is between... Um, cutting between breakfast and lunch, right? Um, as a midday snack and then waiting for a little bit later after lunch so that you have kind of that pick me up before dinner, right? So that would be what I would recommend is make sure. And if you're getting hungry between then, it's most likely because you're not having a good balanced breakfast. So make sure that you are having a good balanced breakfast that has good carbohydrates, which will, which will provide you energy. And it also has good protein, which will help you to stay full and satisfied until you get to lunch. So make sure that you're balancing that, but cut back on that snack. Try that out. If you're not losing weight, um, try cutting back on, on one of those snacks to see how that happens. Okay. Number four, walk more. You guys just get more movement. Um, you know, when we are more productive, um, we're less likely to go off track and, and more likely to feel good and positive and um, confident in what we're doing, right? So move frequently. I was looking at my watch yesterday and, um, you know, it tracked my steps on my Garmin and I was at like 9,750 and I'm like, maybe, maybe every time that I'm like that close, I'm like, what would it, I, I wonder what, what it would be you know, if I just made that effort to hit 10,000 steps a day, which a lot of people do that, right? And I'm like, I wonder if I really was conscious of that, how I would feel, right? Because there are some times in the day where I just feel like low energy and, you know, maybe it's stressed or anxiety. And, you know, maybe that could be something that I fill that time with. It's just a little bit more movement so that I'm very productive and don't get in my head and tend to move on towards some of those destructive behaviors, right? So walk a little bit more, right? It should be a good, easy foundation for all of us. And it's easy to do. It doesn't kind of dip into um, your energy store for what you need, right? Because it's a very sustainable um, uh, exercise to do. So um, it just really is, is a win-win all the time. Okay, my last tip, number five, be patient. You guys, some people get instant results from the beginning, right? Instant results is they, you know, drop a lot of the processed foods and sugars and carbohydrates. Um, and others <coughs> can take three to four weeks to really get acclimated and um, only then do they see that weight slide off, right? I know it's really hard to trust the process and that we really want to see five pounds leave us every single day, right? We would really like to see that because that would be super, super motivating. But it doesn't happen that way for everyone. But if you are tracking, you can see that you're following the process, you can see you're doing the right things, um, and then have some patience, right? Now, if you're not tracking and you're not tracking and, and not for sure knowing that you're doing the right things or you're not tracking because you know you're not doing the right things and you don't want to take note of that and be responsible for that, you've got to get back to this, right? You've got to practice. You've got to be disciplined. You've got to allow yourself to do the right things so that you can see the results happen because results won't happen just because you 
would like to be doing the right things. The results happen because we do do the right things, right? So put that discipline muscle back into action and know that it is going to be worth it. Because again, if you aren't feeling motivated, you're probably not feeling motivated because you're not seeing results. And the only way to do that is you've got to do the hard work. Sometimes we just have to kind of pull up our big girl pants and we've got to do the things so that it can happen for us and that it can be exciting and that it can be motivating for us again to see weight loss happen, to see the definition in our arms or our, our muscles in our stomachs, um, you know, or see your legs slim out, um, whatever it is for you that you really makes you feel good about you and your body. You got to do the work to get there, right? So either way, I want you to know, like, if you're losing weight, if you are losing weight really quickly, or if it's, if you started and it seems to take in a while, um, and you're doing the right things, like this is a lifestyle, you guys, this is something that you're in for the, for the long haul, right? As we change, we take, you know, we take away that biggest loser syndrome, take away that mentality, really start to look at, um, your clean eating as a habit and a skill and something that we're going to acquire over time, right? Instead of a goal and a reactionary thing, that's something that we either do well at or we don't do well at in that it, we start and then we finish, right? We're not looking at it that way, right? Where we want to practice and gain this as a skill so that it comes naturally to us um, to do that. So either way, appreciate that, you know, appreciate what that means and how freeing that worry and think about food all of the time in those ways. Um, and it'll make a big difference for you. So I hope that helps. Hope that really helps to kind of lift you up if you need that right now. Um, helps you to kind of look at this from a better perspective, from a growth perspective. And I hope that you really um, took some notes today and were a student so that you can put these things in practice. So I want you to comment below um, as you've been watching this. Hello, Dana. Thanks for joining us on here. Um, what have you learned? What are you going to put into practice? Right? and uh, let's get better together. So look for my email, it will come to you soon. And again, follow up with me, how are you doing on those commitments? Um, and this isn't a test, right? If you're not doing, if there's some things you're not doing well at, that's okay, right? That's what I'm here for, is to help you to recommit, to get better, to get back on track, to help you realign on the path that you want to be on, right? So you've asked me to do that, I've gotta do that to be true to my commitment for you, so come back at it, and um, if there's things that you want to be improving on or you don't feel good about right now, then let's put a plan in place to do it. And let's really kick butt the last two and a half weeks, because that's what we got before this ends, and I'm super excited to finish strong with you guys. So happy Thursday, and uh, we'll talk to you soon.